and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And I think if I do slideshow mode, I lose you. Oh, no, I don't lose you. Excellent. Okay, there you are. So welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. I'm so glad you're judging this year. I assume that all of you have judged before, but uh, what about you, Joseph? Have you judged before? No, this is the uh -huh. first time I'm doing it. Yeah, because I, I invited everyone who wants to, who has an interest um, to attend tonight. So normally we have a meeting, a discussion like this, not really a presentation that's formal with our lead judges from the previous year. And we up we give them a, updates about, you know, what's new this year and talk about the special things needed to be a lead judge. Um, but this year, I, because so much so much of the content of the competition had changed. I wanted to invite everyone because you're an adult. If you don't understand what I'm talking about because it happened last year, you will deal with it. I just know it. Um, so I'm really happy that you're here tonight, that you're judging and participating in the competition. I'm Carolyn. Um, I am the competition manager this year. Malu um, Schloss, who will probably be joining us shortly, is our entries manager and former manager of this competition. She's also sort of like my co-manager because I rely on her for so much. And we have Phoebe Forio on the call right now. She's our judging manager. So I'm very happy to have Phoebe um, this year because that means you all have a direct um, line of help for judging issues that might come up for you this year. And then Jackie is one of our lead judges and Kim and Joseph are, and Sue are um, some of our judges. Yeah, actually, I, I think Sue is a lead judge. Anyway, um, I consult my list, but you all are judging and thanks a lot. Um, so what I'm going to talk about are last year's successes, of course, um, last year's challenges because it's juicy and I just can't wait to tell you about it and have you tell me what you would have done in that case, but it's all done now. It's just kind of like rehashing old stuff. And then what is new for the competition for this year? And remember that tonight's discussion is not judging training um, that is basically teaching you how to judge. It's just these three things, um, a discussion among us. I don't even think we're going to take a whole hour to talk about it. Um, so it's really just kind of like because I like to be transparent and everybody is on my team. <laughs> um, so last year we had was actually 2020. So we are um, we started working in 2020. I think our entry deadline was in 2020 in December, something like that. And then throughout 2021, we had, uh, we finished up the competition. We had 54 entries and 54 judges, which was an amazing amount because that meant that each judge team of three got three entries and everyone felt like that was the perfect load and it didn't uh, conflict too much with their work and family responsibilities and still gave them something from, um, you know, to improve their own um, careers, learning things and learning what other people are doing in their businesses. So we had 54 entries and of those 34 won awards, so 63%, which is a nice healthy number. And just a reminder, um, and you see the other numbers here, that these awards are, um, ju they're, they're ju we judge each entry against a standard. We don't have a limit of how many entries can win distinguished versus excellence versus merit versus, you know, any award at all. We don't have a anything like that. We judge each entry on its own merits and we try to see if it meets the criteria that we, that STC originally set for these different award levels. And um, now STC as an international organization is not running a competition. And that's why we have the STC Alliance competition of six chapters bonding together to do this activity. All right, so let's just get right into it. Um, our so I, first of all, that was a big success. Yes, yes. 54 entries, 54 judges, everyone, it was amazing. Everyone did a great job. Um, entrants loved it. Um, it was a good, a good competition for us. Um, but our main concern was that 
perhaps we did not communicate the best of show process as well as we could have. I know that I was a little bit uh, lacking in my understanding and I was trying to communicate and that didn't go as well, but we had just one best of show nomination from our judges, but we had several other distinguished awards, distinguished winners that were not nominated for best of show. So a, a group uh, in our previous rules, they said that um, if you have a distinguished winner, you can consider it for best of show. You can tell the managers that you want to consider it for best of show, but hardly anyone did that. Um, so at the last minute, because we had a meeting all scheduled and time set aside, and it was two days in, until the meeting to decide best of show, I sort of last minute recruited other nominations, allowing three excellence winners in to the running, and then one more distinguished. So then we had five entries to decide between we had a record number of people attend. I think we had like 30, 35 people attend the best of show judging and you look at each of these entries in detail. And then once you know, an excellence winner won. So it, normally a distinguished winner can only win, but since the excellence was in the running, uh, they, they were allowed to win. And then um, that was a challenge for some people sort of after the fact. And also the best of show winner uh, was a US government PDF that was missing accessibility features. And so the team that judged it, they were very uh, adept at accessibility and felt that because it was missing these features um, and it was a government publication and it was the same way online that they had misstepped. And so they, they downgraded them to excellence. Okay. so. That's pretty much the whole story uh, that they, they won the best of show and they were excellent. So they were an excellence award winner. But what do you think stood out to me as being a way we could fix this problem? Let's listen. Let's go on. Um, so think about that. In fact, if you want to talk about it now, what, like, what would you have done in that situation? <laughs> Anyone? Now, here's one idea. That excellence winner could have won. And we, I mean, distinguished winner could have won and we could have just canceled our meeting. But everyone was kind of looking forward to it, including myself, and it was really fun. So we didn't do that. We tried to get more entries um, into our best of show judging. So here's our, here's a summary. So keeping that in the back of your mind, you'll, you'll know it when I say it. Um, so what's new this year? We are now emphasizing that entries should su support technical work products. And I'm gonna go into each of these in detail just in a moment. Um, we changed the accessibility criteria and added accessibility training for judges. So this had never existed before. Um, we added a new entry form question for entrance about the medium of that product, work product for the audience, not just how does the competition, what is the format in which the competition receives your work, but how is the audience supposed to consume it? Maybe it's online, maybe it's print, maybe it's print and online. So this is a new question on our entry form, which we hope will help our judges because one of the concerns we had from people probably less comfortable with accessibility is they thought, if it's a print document, why does it have to be accessible? And of course it doesn't. It doesn't have to follow the same criteria. It follows like probably other criteria that could be said to be accessibility, but you know, it's, it's a print document. It does not need to follow the same um, criteria for, for assessing how, how accessible it is. Just put it that way. Um, all distinguished winners, this is the big thing also besides the accessibility training, um, all distinguished winners are now candidates for best in show. Judges, lead judges no longer have to submit a separate form that says, I'm going to promote this to best of show. We're going to take all distinguished winners and only distinguished winners, and they're going to be um, voted upon by all of the judges who, who show up to the best of show judging, which at this time is December 10th, which is a Saturday. Um, is it me or is it her? It's her. Carolyn, uh, yes, it's her. Okay. We didn't hear, Carolyn, we didn't Hi. hear the last four. That was weird. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. All right. I don't know what happened. Thank you for telling me. 
You've been kind of a little um, in and out-ish. Okay. I'm going to go back to the successes. I said that we had 54 entries and 54 judges, which is incredible. Then I was going into these bullets here, but I could just move on to the detail of these bullets instead of reading you the bullets. Um, what's we were in the uh, middle of uh, the what's new this year when things started Okay, thank apart. you so we, much. You're welcome. All right, so, um, and I have a slide for each of these things to talk about them. Um, we're now emphasizing that entries should support technical work products as opposed to work products that have no technical basis at all. So we want to try as much as we can to have our entries be technical documentation of some sort. And whether it's an online you know, product or, or paper or, or PDF, we want it to be technical if we can. So we're trying to navigate that at the moment. We had some interesting entries last year and that was, this is how we're dealing with it. We're just trying to promote it differently, I guess. Um, what, what, what would be an example of a non-technical document that we received? We, ha we received a movie, a historical movie about World War II. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. We also received some um, graphic designs that were um, different versions of the same pictures. And I think that the justification was that the pictures, um, well, I don't remember the justification, but we let it stay in the competition. We also had a, comp a conference website promoting a conference. And um, wasn't Best in Show not technical? Best in Show was about mitigating vi um, violence mitigating and like risk. religious yeah. risk at, at, um, at like religious institutions. It wasn't so, a yeah, that's not very technical, is it? Not a technical document at all. It was well written, but it wasn't a technical document. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't I don't think we have this problem so far with any of the entries we've received, Malu. Right. But last year we had a whole bunch of them. And our judging teams were really were really upset. And um, so we made some changes. We even, I think, had to ask a couple at least one entrant not to that we couldn't help them we couldn't enter but anyway so that's so we're just promoting it like this is a, a technical well, work product we had one entry about crowdsourcing do you remember raising money there's a fundraising for a newspaper to stay in business for yes and and the the procedure was summarized but in the end, uh, the team felt that it wasn't, it didn't feel technical enough. And we almost gave the entrant back their money, but. Yeah, it was, so, it was so late in the process and we were just, you know, our judges had already started work and it was just, it was just, it was a lot of pain, you know, for us to try to make that decision. So we're just trying to promote the competition differently. Um, we changed the accessibility criteria. I'll show you in a bit. Um, we added accessibility training. We're going to have it next Tuesday. What? Carolyn, your sound. <clears throat> My sound again? Is it, is it still bad? Okay. Hold on. Let me call yeah, in. You're popping it. Out. All right. Let me call in. Um, <clears throat> if, so, if anyone wants to... Um, Continue reading these bullets. Molly, will you do that? I, I got to find the Zoom. Uh, I can't see it. <laughs> oh, really? OK. Um, all right. Uh, OK, let me try to. It's at 125% on my screen. So you may have to um, fix your screen. Carolyn, you may just be able to stop your video. And OK, have, have I'll do that. Interaction. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, okay, uh, tell me if it gets bad again. Um, so we added um, accessibility training. We have new entry form question about the medium for the audience for the product, which is going to hopefully help a lot. Uh, we had an entry form question about the medium that you're, that you're submitting to the competition. 
but we didn't have an audience question, so we added that. Um, all distinguished winners are now candidates for best of show and require presentations by judging teams at the best of show judging meeting. So they're supposed to make the case that that entry should be best of show. Everyone has to participate who has a, has a distinguished winner. Um, we have a brand new New York Metro website. I'm not with the New York Metro, but I am, they are supporting our chapter, I mean, our, our competition. And I am working on their behalf and that the Alliance is um, supported by their website. And so um, that was a lot of work this year, uh, mostly done by TJ Cardenas, Cardenas. And I don't know if you all remember him, but I am really sad to tell you if you don't already, um, if you do know him and you don't know this, but unfortunately he passed this past oh. April. And um, that really was one of the things that sort of changed how we approach this year. This year has been really weird. Um, that's why we moved the competition to the fall. Also, uh, the STC Alliance competition general information and rules was quite out of date and a bad format to really review online. And same with the general guidelines for judging. And we updated those. And we have a brand new marketing video, which is what is the STC Alliance competition. So I encourage you to take a look at that awesome thing. Okay, so uh, here's the, the wording, for example, for the technical entries. Um, did you or your company produce great technical instruction and so on with uh, italics? <laughs> That's just sort of how we did it to emphasize that. For the accessibility criteria, uh, we had accessibility as a portion of the, uh, of one of our pages for online entries. Um, I moved it out into its own page because it was long. It's what you see here, the section at the bottom, but it's only for on it's only for online entries, and it'll be clear when you see it that it is. Um, we are not going to be evaluating all of the things we did before, because part of the problem is there's not an easy way to test some of those things. Um, we wanted to have the option to be able to test and have procedures for how that is done. So we took out a number, three items, like users can resize the text. It seems just sort of out of date um, with so many online materials. Um, and then remo we removed, does this conform to accessibility guidelines and national regulations? Because, well, you know, we are fairly international as a competition. Um, nobody has to really memorize all of Section 508 in the U.S. and, and make a blanket statement that, that the entry meets those requirements. It's hard to test, it's too complicated. And then users can access the information in multiple ways. Nobody, no judge to my knowledge has ever said no. <laughs> so it was sort of like a uh, redundant material. Then we added information is not communicated through color alone because that is very easy to test. And we've documented how you can test that. And then if the entry is a PDF, it contains PDF tags for screen reader users. And the issue with that is that sometimes the PDF is a companion to some other print document. And if that is the case, we're hoping that the entry form will clarify it so that we will be able to evaluate that. So we'll see how that goes this year. So we have these five items. Any questions about these accessibility criteria? Any thoughts on the changes? Do any of you ever work with accessibility at your job? Uh, I'm actually implementing <laughs> access, um, accessibility requirements um, at work. Uh -huh. and I've done Section 508 testing because I've worked um, on government websites. Okay, great. I'm right. really glad. I'm glad to see this clarification and update happening. Thank you. Um, and I think it's a good clarifying question to ask um, around the entries format. Exactly. Um, yeah. Sure. Right. A lot of our judges, that was their main concern. Well, how is this supposed to be consumed? And where does it come into play that it has to be accessible? You know, how do I make that decision? I don't know if we're going to fix that problem this year, but we have tried. One thing that I have to say is a great 
thing is that um, when we were at the TechCon Roadshow a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was 10 days ago, I forget, um, Metadata said that they've hired someone to just review their materials for accessibility before publication as a result of the competition feedback. So that's good. Things change eventually. But you know, <clears throat> we're trying to do it gently so that people can learn while they also- And Carolyn, since we talked last, I am now responsible for um, managing the accessibility of our products. Oh, really? That's so interesting. Are you able to hear me just now? I saw that my internet co connection was unstable. Was I talking on top of her or was she? No, you weren't. Can you hear me now? She, yeah, it's. I heard you. No, Carol. I just heard something robotic, maybe like a few, like a few seconds ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Reconnecting maybe. A Did you guys hear me at all? Yes, I heard no, you. I didn't. No. Oh, 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 only I heard it. Sue said that she is now in charge of accessibility for her. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to talk again. Last time before I talked to Carolyn, I'm now responsible for ensuring that all of the product teams within my business unit meet the CAG responsibility. Oh, is it me? Holy crap. No, it, it's it's not you. Uh, it's okay. Carolyn's connection is unstable. Okay, so I don't have that meet the WCAG uh, requirements <laughs> mm -hmm. and and submit the proper VPATs. So I'm now responsible for ensuring compliance. I am not the one for responsible for testing, but I'm um, we are now uh, training everybody within our business unit, everybody involved in it. So that's amazing. Sudden, I, got, I got a lot more involved than I had planned on it. Well, wonderful. Um, excellent. So we, I've created this, um, on this document, sort of like a, a quick reference or like a, maybe it's thorough. It's about each of our items in the bullets here. And how do you check for it? We're going to have a training on exactly this next Tuesday. So that these one, two, three, four, five, six items are understood. That is how we are starting. We're not trying to bite off the entire roll <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> We're trying to have a little nibble, something that is, is acceptable that all of us can learn together. We are all on the same page. We build our knowledge. Yeah, I think uh, being on the same page is very important. Exactly. Before uh, John Garrison leaves, uh, have we decided to postpone the yeah. deadline to the 30th? Yes. John, do you hear that? Oh, has he gone? Already. Okay. We can let All him right. know. <clears throat> yeah. Um, no, he's, oh no, that's not him. So yeah, we're going to change the entry deadline to September 30th to try to drum up some more entries. Okay, here's the entry form question. Here's the eliminating the best of show form. I, I don't know if that material that I said was um, blocked out by my internet connection before, but um, I basically said that we've decided rather than wait for a judging team to who, who gives a distinguished to an entry to submit a best of show form, once we find out that it's a distinguished entry, we'll know that it has to be part of our best of show judging. And that team will need to defend it. <laughs> and, and then there'll be this competition in the meeting and then somebody wins best of show. And then the last couple things here, um, I said, we have an all new website. You can check us out over here. Um, if I know it looks like a long URL, but if you start typing in stcalliance.stc New York Met nymetro.net that's like a vanity url that opens it if this or you could just google us because we're very easily findable now um thanks to our incredible team at new york metro webs um chapter for their website we have the new rules they're basically like just an update to what was there before but we now have like a google document we can update regularly um mike nelson did an amazing job with our video check it out it's like two minutes um, last year, we provided Word and Google Drive, Google Doc versions of the assessment forms. We're only maintaining one version, but we don't like in Google Docs, but
But if your team, if your judging lead wants to do it in Word, it is totally fine. You just have to be responsible for converting it to Word for them or let them convert it to Word. But uh, keeping the two version, the two formats uh, in sync was um, kind of hard for me last year. <clears throat> Finally, um, just a reminder that we're going to try to have a file naming convention for all of our assessments with comp 2022 underscore the entry number that you will be given for that entry and your judge number that you will be given, preferably with a zero before it. <laughs> and tips um, for as your as a lead judge, please reach out to your team members right away as soon as you find out who they are. Uh, confirm that they have all of the right entries and can access them. And this will most likely be uh, late September. Uh, I mean, this will be early October because we're, we're delaying the entry deadline. Um, ask for the travel schedules of your judging team and schedule around them as much as possible so that all three of you can communicate uh, regularly at whatever period that you decide. Um, try to keep with the suggested schedule on the website. It's there for a reason. Uh, if you check out our judging, let's see, call for, call for judges, then there's going to be schedule. We have, to, we have to look at this again now that we have a new deadline, but just check out these different milestones and based on the number of entries you're given, you'll have milestones for, for each one. So we may have to review this again, but this is where we keep our schedule under call for judges. Um, touch base regularly with your judging team. Make sure they are able to make time for what they have to do so that they get everything done by the best of show um, by actually December 3rd. Well, let's not talk about the dates right now because it's confusing me, but by the date that we tell you <laughs> once we get started, we want to have <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the assessments by a certain date. Um, Ask your judges to submit a first draft of their assessment form. That would be very helpful. Not their first impressions necessarily, but just sort of like how they would write up their assessment. We'd like to try to encourage like a lot of detail, really give the entr entrance something oh. to take home with them that is, you know, detailed. And, and on Thursday, we'll talk about how to do that, how it should look. And then make sure that every judge has read the entry form to understand the full scope or the limited scope of what they're supposed to judge. That is, the entry form is going to tell you, you know, please don't look at these sections. You know, we have certainly had situations where, you know, one of us has gone down a rabbit hole um, of evaluating something that is not supposed to be evaluated. So discuss this at the first meeting. Everyone just gets on the same page. And that is all I have for tonight. Malu, would you like to say anything or would anyone of you like to ask a question or anything? One of the things we want to uh, reiterate is that uh, although we have a best of show uh, judging that's our on our consensus day, we don't necessarily have to have a best of show if none of the entries is deemed good enough to be a, a best of show quality. So I think that's the kind of, uh, if we accept that, then we, we really don't need to include the excellence uh, award these two and which, which ended up in confusion last year. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think the, the, other, the other thing that people get confused about is the milestone. The milestone is a guideline for the team. It's not necessarily the deadline. I mean, so it really depends on the team how you're going to work around that suggested milestone because if you follow that a little more closely, then it's easier to, to beat the, the deadlines. And But some groups that uh, don't, then to follow it, then have to scramble during Thanksgiving to try to finish their uh, assessments. Then becomes becomes more of a heartache rather than uh, a joyous process to to That's actually true. accomplish something. That's yeah. true. 
I noticed in the <laughs> chat that Sue had a question. If we're if we're trying to have technical work products or emphasize it, does it negate having informational materials category or promotional materials category? No, it doesn't. Um, in fact, I feel like that history video was submitted as like a informational, um, you know, entry, but it wasn't technical. Other than the fact that I'm sure it's technical to make a movie. Um, also, he did a lot of research, but it just the, the judges uh, made a decision that that wasn't technical enough. So I guess as long as it's about something technical, even if it's information or promotional, as long as somewhere, you know, in what it's promoting or what it's informing you about is technical, then it's going to be okay with us. <laughs> I think there's a fine line with that because having been a remote employee or a remote judge for bazillions of years, um, a lot of the things that I've judged or been a lead judge for haven't necessarily been technical. Right. They, yeah, a lot, they're, yeah. They're informational and they're promotional. And I'm going to argue that promotional is not necessarily te technical. Yeah. Well, SPC has always it, had that category. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it depends. Uh, there are a lot of promotional materials that can also be technical. So websites, I mean, a website uh, promoting, you know, a product could be. I think they can have technical information like the HP stuff, right? It was some of it was, you know, how to how to set something up. But some of it was just, you know, this is what what our product is. Right. Yeah. And, and what about the magazines? I mean, that the magazines were technical in and we could look at it and say, OK, the graphics are this, the text is this but you know, basically it just explained uh concepts of engineering of electrical engineering yeah but like i've seen there was one year there was a training video for for like a fast food restaurant or there was you know financial planning document and those were very good and then the question is would those now not be accepted uh, probably it would still be accepted, accepted if we, if it's the kind of stuff we've accepted before, we were just trying to eliminate some of our outliers that we had last year, I guess. Yeah. And we didn't we're really do a heavy, you know, a heavy change. It was just sort of like where we said communication, we said technical, <laughs> like we didn't even have the word technical here before in this, what I'm sharing that was, you know, probably misleading. So I do have another question because last yeah. year and it was when I saw the best of show thing where it said, okay, every distinguish is, is automatic and excellent is not, um, not accepted. Last year, we had some real confusion about the, what is an excellent, what is a, you know, a, uh, a distinguished. I mean, I don't think we had too many things where it was like, you know, just normal or like just, you know, what was the, the other one? Uh, before distinguished, before uh, excellent. There's uh, merit. Merit. There's yeah. merit. merit. Hmm? yeah, merit. I don't think we had a lot of between merit. You know, you're, there's always that distinction of merit. Yeah. Is it what is it? What is it? But we really did have some things that where the distinguished, there were excellence that were actually. Oh, kind of being, you know, it was the whole thing with the, always the PDF linked. I mean, I think we have to be very clear in trying to distinguish, especially since now that we're saying that, you know, all the distinguishers are in and all the um, excellent aren't, we should really think about trying to be clear about what is an excellent and what is a distinguished and really trying to make that, you know, make that judgment a little bit clearer for people. Yeah, I would agree with you. We had a document like that, and I've been trying to convert it into our current assessment criteria. And we still have that document, but it just doesn't apply to any of our criteria right now. And it, it breaks it down in, in um, examples of how things would differ between mm -hmm. them. But I think that what Phoebe is going to present on Thursday is going to be about like the number of major and minor errors. Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, it's hard to generalize. 
other than that. And I think it is it, a problem. It's, subject, it's subjective. Yeah, it know? really is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, I've definitely <laughs> been struggling with it. We are going to have um, a sample judging comments um, filled out. Mike Nelson is going to work on, is supposed to be working on that for us. I'm sure he will. He's, he's out of town. Um, when he's when he has that ready, hopefully we will share it this month. Um, but that's not the same thing as like choosing between award levels. It's sort of we might actually share what award it won. That might help. But I think that unless we had um, sample judging comments for every award level, we were going to try to have a training where um, we had you guess what award did this win. <laughs> But we didn't really have a lead for that to to, man, to, to figure out how that training would work. So mm. I apologize. Uh, we didn't really, it, it just seemed a little bit uh, overwhelming for me personally. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah. And last year was really, it was a, it was a very specific thing that seemed to be the, the point of contention where you had two or, you know, two or three excellent entries and one of them was, hey, you didn't do the PDF linking. And then the other one was like, we didn't think that was important. And yes. maybe it's just a matter of, you know, making sure the criteria about what you're judging on and not judging on is a little clearer. But, right. you know, the one that got dinged and didn't get the distinguished in some ways was even a better entry, but they had dinged it on that, you know, and it was like, wait a minute. You know what? Yeah. What is right? And we did review all of our assessment documents. So this page called Judge Training and Resources has a link to our current assessment form, and we looked at each category and might have made small changes, um, but nothing that I needed to share besides the accessibility page. And um, so that is as good as we can make it. I think you can take a look at that. And um, then the accessibility training we thought would help. Also just understanding that, making sure the judges understand that of all each of these criteria um, here on the left is pretty equal to one another. So if one is weak and one is strong, you as the judge have to make the call. How does that affect your overall feeling about this entry, given that these are the criteria that we are considering? And so accessibility is just one piece. Accessibility for electronic entries, so that's not for print. Um, so how, if this all fails, well, according to the entry form, it may not be important that this company, because they're doing a print document, you know, uh, maybe it's not important for them to make it accessible, but it's important to so many of us these days. It's very important to me. It's probably my favorite topic. So I'm trying to expand on it for this year to make everything very easy to follow and judge. And um, here is the accessibility document that I made that I hope that all the judges will review before next Tuesday. It's not super long. It's just this. <clears throat> these six items and how to test for them. So um, why is this important and how do you check it? And also to avoid uh, responses like not applicable, not applicable, mm -hmm. but actually to try to, to answer that if yeah. we can. Right, you know, so, so what ends up, if, if you um, are evaluating the entry with all of the criteria sort of equal, then you don't feel hopefully uh, concerned about providing some feedback on accessibility for that entry, even though accessibility might not have been their major strength. You know, you're just letting them know, well, this didn't have alt text, <laughs> you know, and then you can decide as a judging group, how important is that given this type of work and what other things are strong. So our, our concern, some of our, our council's concern was that we were going to to really downgrade awards due to the accessibility being clarified and I, I just don't think anything changes with how we decide on awards we're just making this clearer we're giving you training 
we're hoping to be a competition that has judges trained in that area. Let's put it that way. The thing that you guys need to also recognize is that it's not just training judges. We're also training those who submit entries. Yes, that's, that's something true. that's super important these days. If you're submitting an entry and you're probably not in the government market and you're not doing an accessible entry and you didn't create an accessible PDF, then that's probably fine and it's not anything to worry about. But if you wanted to learn more about it, then that's something that you might want to consider. If you're doing accessible PDFs and you created an accessible PDF and you are selling into the government market and somebody last year said they sell it to the, the federal government, but they don't create accessible PDFs, they're actually there's a problem there because there's somewhere along the line, there is a disconnect. They have to have accessible PDFs, period. Right. It's a government requirement. Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's just, that, that's just the thing that they need to be paying a little bit of attention to. And it's not that difficult to do. And there's a couple of little tiny little tricks that you can do to create accessible PDFs. Right. Yeah. I think it's, it's a great way to promote um, these easy things that can become part of our um, common understanding. And I was so happy to hear that metadata, and I think even um, Nexight, they said that they have been focusing more on accessibility now that they got our feedback. And they still got high awards for their work. They just got a little bit more educated in that area, and we were the ones able to do it, and I'm proud of that. Next, well, I get a lot of next site too. Next site also uh, works a lot with the government, and that's right. one of the things. If right. you're going to post something up on the web, you need to make sure that people that download it can read it. Yeah. So we're just starting with you know six elements, and we're explaining how to test them, and I think that will be. I hope that that will be um, a reasonable amount to learn um, for all of us. You know, to all of us have that foundation. Any other comments? This is this is Tom. Oh, Milo, you want to go first? Tom, go ahead. Okay, I I, I have to, I have two comments um, that have to do I think with lead judging and um, and not accessibility lead judging and um, the best of show. The first one is what happened to me last year is <clears throat> I I got all my judging forms in by the date those milestones that we have, and then my lead judge didn't do anything with them until the night before everything was due. <laughs> busy, And then they write me that afternoon, oh, I want you to make all these changes. Oh dear. And I just said, I'm busy, I can't do this, this is ridiculous. Right. So, so what, I, what, what I would recommend to make it more fair for all is to, is to at least suggest, if not require, the judges to schedule, since the, we as the judges have to apply a deadline that, that the lead judge has the deadline to look at them and not the night before they're due so that we have time to respond to that. Yes, I could not agree more. Thank okay. you for letting me know that happened. Sure, sure. And then the thing, and then the thing about the uh, best in show, it, it might just be me, I don't know, but I have a lot of trouble voting for best of show when I just see all these quick things flipped in front of my face on the, on the, the webinar. So I know yeah. it would be more helpful to me if you could make available, or I should say we, because we're all in this together, if we could make available the best of show contestants prior to that Saturday when we vote on them so that we have a chance to sit in our jammies at home <laughs> and look at them, not just flip, flip, flip that people decide to show us. And then I think yeah. I would be able to provide a better, a better vote for what I think is best of show. Yeah, that, that's definitely my big concern about having a best of show that it's um, that, you know, it's reliant upon how you defend your award. Yeah, what what I think I'm not I'm not saying this happens, but what I could imagine happen is that the one that gets the best of show is the one that looks the best when you're going flip, flip, flip. But I'd rather, yeah. but I want to get beyond that and look at them for what they are and not just which one looks looks pretty in a quick flip flip. 
Yeah, I, I like that idea. I will discuss that with our council, but it sounds like it would help a lot. <laughs> I uh, if you do that, then you're going to be changing the dates of the deadlines, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, we, that's what we have to talk. We have more, to talk through more. to figure it out. Uh, Where's yeah. I, it would have been nice if we could offer the accessibility training to potential entrants to maybe that's something for the next go around if we do a second go around a next go around of this yeah yeah well hopefully the, uh, you know our materials are out on the on the web like i had showed you um so maybe we need to promote them more next time yeah to, to entrance yeah so I was just going to answer or uh, say something to Tom. So about the plea judge not getting back to you. Well, as judges, remember that when your plea judge asks for those assessments ahead of time, um, don't keep putting them off. Because I, there were some, I've had the experience where judges keep putting me off and not turning them in. So everybody's scrambling at the last minute. So anyway, oh, yeah. so yes, it works I, both I, ways. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, and I'm not in that category at all. What I do, what personally, how I do it is I want to get them done. So <laughs> I take all of my entries and I blast through them at the beginning, and I usually turn them in all right around the first milestone. So my, so, so my judge had months and months and months to look at these things. So that's not my case, but I do understand having been a lead judge people stall around and they don't get them in. And if somebody turned it into me two days before as a lead judge, obviously if they turned it into me two days before they're due, then the only day we got is the day before they're due. But I really didn't feel good at being, so, especially me being so early with these things and then having them sat on for several months, you know, and then all of a sudden surprise, I want you to change all these things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta wonder if they understood that that was your that's your submission. <laughs> you gotta wonder what were they thinking. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well. I actually. I actually talked to my lead judge about it. Of course. Yeah. And it, it was just that everybody's busy, and, and you know I have to get it in by my deadline, but my lead judge didn't have a deadline. Hence my suggestion. <laughs> their their deadline was everything the last day. So right. they were going by their deadline because they're busy like everybody. Right, right. You know? So it wasn't intentional. It's just the way things work when you're busy and you don't have a deadline. That's the reason why I would prefer to require the judges to set a deadline with their team for each, for when they're going to get back on each milestone. Yeah, that would be, that would be <laughs> ideal. Yeah. Yes. We're suggesting yeah. certain dates and, and if to start yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. And well, yeah. And, yeah, make, you know, make, well, sorry, Tom. Yeah. And I was just going to say, yeah. And, and certainly I don't know. I don't know if I will judge if I can't get those from my, from my team lead judge when they're going to get back to me. If they won't set those dates and insist to do the last day, then I may not be able to judge. So what that's a, that's you're a, thinking yeah. is we would have a secondary set of deadlines. So it would be like, milestone one and then there would be milestone 1a which would be lead judge feedback right and that's when the judge has to get that, back that to makes us. a lot of sense right and mm -hmm. say either i don't have any comments or i do have comments and these are them and then we put it to bed yeah and i think each i think each, i think there's two weeks between each milestone so that's what could happen by that second week right you know, is the lead that could be the, the week that the lead judge gets back to us by. Yeah, right. at, le at least a first round of, hey, this looks good, or hey, I'm going to need you to, to change mm -hmm. some things. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there any conception, as, as we've been discussed, that, that within each uh, frame of, of an entry, like you say, okay, two weeks between, that we could kind of say to the lead judge, hey, the first week is for you to receive them. This week is for you to receive them. And by that next week, you need to get together with your team and go over them. Is, would that help? Yeah. yeah uh -huh. 
I was going to say, yeah, that that sounds that sounds pretty neat, Scott. Yeah, for example, it maybe maybe if I if I need to have it in by a Monday, then maybe by the following Monday would be a good deadline for the lead judge to have it back to me. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. It kind of yeah you know, democratizes um, the different the two judge roles as well. As everybody, you know, instead of making it all for the judge, the team leads, um, making sure that they get everything to the competition, which is sort of like, you know, as a competition manager, that's my goal, right? Um, it kind of brings the judges, it gives, it allows them to have expectations as well. Right. And then at that point, you can even determine what kind of uh, award you want to give it. So as a closing on the second meeting, you say, all right, we've all gone through our, our um, opinions and all. Uh, what award do we want to get? I mean, that's up to the lead judge, you know. Right. <laughs> best, that, that, best also might, that also might get people a little more motivated to get the information into the lead judge, knowing that they're going to have that feedback back. And it would make this, you know, if you actually get that and get that feedback back, it also would give you a chance to not get two or three really maybe subpar entries all together towards the end of the, the competition where then you're looking at it and going, Hmm, you, you are misspelling a bunch of stuff in your response or your response is very light, or maybe you want to try to like comment a little bit more or at all. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we definitely want, we do want judges to feel mm -hmm. like at the last minute they can make some final changes because, you know, you don't want to have to be locked in. Right. No, it could be draft. a draft. It could be a draft and a response to the draft. It, it, yeah. And then the right. final is due, you know, the dates um, that we, yeah. And, and to be honest, as a lead judge, I like that because it, you know, you're trying to also do your own and, it, and you can get ridiculously busy, but it kind of gives you, something that helps you focus on hey i gotta actually look at this stuff right okay, so what, what's the on, what's the onus behind a lead judge being able to tell another judge you know we want to fix this what what's the i mean it happened to me last year actually <laughs> i was lead, a lead the judge, lead judge was... the lead judge said to you this is too thin or something like that uh or, or gave me kind yeah said you know can you uh, write I can't some more of she yeah you, Oh, I, I write a lot. I maybe I write too much. I don't know. I don't but know. Um, yeah, I, I just remember. Uh, oh, you know what? I think it's because they we we grabbed all the entries. Uh, she grabbed all the entries and then said, "Well, you know, can you can you modify this to say this?" I I have to remember back. It was a year ago. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Know I know. What happened yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. But, uh, yeah. We'll, we so can... we'll see which way it goes. I mean, you know, let, yeah. we have a concern. We can we can bring it to you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The lead judges, um, I about to say that they, Are they, they more special than the regular judges. What I'm <laughs> they tend to be more experienced and can feel these, these things on their own without a lot of standardization. You know what I mean? So it, it does become a matter of getting to know your lead judge, understanding how they work and, and the same with the judges. It's just, it's trying to be a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my team last year, we didn't follow the calendar. So the calendar had milestone one, milestone, milestone two was entry one, milestone three was entry two, or was entry whatever it was, due to uh, deadlines and travel schedules from everybody. Um, we agreed that we would meet on a regular basis, but we would not have this, the deadlines that were, um, quote, recommended by right. the okay. competition but we would meet the deadlines that we had to meet so we met um initially and made, first of all made sure that everybody could access the deadlines and and do what they needed to do yes that was fine then we had an initial meeting to uh get our sort of we didn't fill out that form like the initial impressions but we did meet and discuss it um what we thought about every about the the entries that we had we had a a, a unique set of entries last year, if I recall correctly. And then we met once to go over uh, sort of like a pre-consensus. And then we met 
to go over to uh, do a consensus. And we thought that we might need to consens consensus, I can't talk, to consensus meetings, but it turned out that we actually ended up coming to a full consensus on that one. We went a little bit over what we planned, our time frame that we planned, but we ended up coming to consensus on that one. And then I spent uh, an hour or so going over everybody's entries once they turned them over. I had one that I sent back asking for some clarifications, not, I don't do a whole edit. I think what I did was I tried to make sure that everything was positive. And then um, I gathered up and wrapped up and sent everything off. off. Yep. And before we send out the assessments, then um, we as the managers of the competition review each assessment form as well. It's not that we don't trust the lead judges, we just like to review and maybe catch a typo or two, get an idea of what kind of, of stuff we're getting back. Well, we're just about here at eight o'clock, which is longer than I thought, um, but we had some really good discussion. Uh, I. I don't know how many entries we're going to have this year, but because we don't have that many right now, we have extended the, the entry deadline by another week. So September 30th, if you wouldn't mind looking for um, our social media posts, they actually come from my chapter because my wonderful volunteer friend, Vicki Dill is doing all of our um, promotions. So if you wouldn't mind looking at our chapters, um, social media and reposting, I would appreciate it the DC chapter. And you have the name of it right oh. there, my screen little logo. Yeah, Vicki is so funny. She does a really good job. Anything else, Malu? Uh, nope. <clears throat> All right. I, I think we're, we're, set, we're still uh, accepting judge, uh, suggestions if you have any judges that you know of that are willing to be a, a team judge or a uh, maybe a, a judge for for a problem issue or or something like that we we don't we don't really know yet exactly how many entries we're going to get I mean um, metadata has not accepted has not submitted one entry yet, but they can end up submitting eight. And we don't we don't have the capacity to handle um, eight or like HP submitted as many as uh, five to eight in every every year. I, I don't know if they're going to submit anything this year, but I thought because the in their in the roadshow presentation they were talking about how they were moving to a new platform. I got the sense that maybe they, everything for them is kind of like being pushed ahead because they're doing this big transformation. All right. That's just sort of the feeling I got. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for taking the time with us tonight. I hope it was informative and interesting and I will be promoting, I'll be putting this uh, re recording somewhere that everyone can get it in the slides too. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, thank welcome. you, Carolyn. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Your Wi-Fi. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <Yeah>. Bye. <laughs>